why do you believe in God? Is it because of the Bible or are you using some other sort of reasoning to, yeah, to come to the conclusion that a God exists? Yeah, Jesus Christ. So would you say that if the Bible didn't exist, you'd, you'd still believe in God or you wouldn't believe in God? I mean, yes, I would believe there's a God, but I wouldn't know who he is. But you're asking me, why do I believe in God? Well, I believe in the God mm. of the Bible, God revealed in Jesus because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one who convinces me that not only God, but the God of the Bible exists because when Jesus walked this earth, even as let's say you are just an historian, forget that you're a Christian, you believe in the Bible. You can ask an historian about the historical Jesus, unless you're one of these extreme fanatics that say Jesus mythicist, they'll say, Yes, we know that Jesus Christ walked this earth because we have enough records. We don't believe they're inspired, inerrant. They don't believe any book is inerrant, but these records have been preserved, and we can apply a historical method to determine whether a saying is authentic or not. Now we have to be careful of that. Just because the historical method says this is authentic this unlikely doesn't mean that what they deem to be unlikely didn't happen. What I'm trying to get at is, if you just follow it as an historian, here are the facts you can establish on historical grounds. A man named Jesus walked this earth. He claimed divine prerogatives, divine attributes, divine functions, and then people testified that he was a miracle worker, that they saw him do miracles and experience miracles. He was killed. He was buried. On the third day, his tomb was discovered empty by a group of women followers, which is significant because in the first century, the testament of women was null and void. If you want to convince someone about the veracity, historicity of your report, you don't have women as eyewitnesses because the testimony of women was not even considered. And yet here you have, according to the earliest tradition, it was a group of his women followers that discovered the empty and saw him alive. And then his followers claim that he appeared to them alive physically and now lives in heaven and were willing to be killed and die for that claim. And that sprung Christianity. There would be no Christianity, no church without the resurrection of Jesus. So if I look at these facts, that means I have an event in history that you cannot explain away. The birth of the church and Christianity, which claim their father was killed, but he was raised from the dead, never to die again. And he lives physically in heaven as Lord. Now, if you know anything about messianic movements, this is a fact. When a messianic claimant appears and is killed, his movement dies. It disappears. People do not continue to propagate and promote the teaching of a failed messiah who is killed. So now you're going to have to explain, explain. You, even as a Muslim, have to explain the birth of Christianity. Because the earliest evidence, the oldest evidence from those who claim to know Jesus is that he was killed. He appeared alive physically. He's now alive in heaven. And they went preaching that message even unto death. And hundreds of thousands of Greek pagans and Jews converted to this movement. Now, how do you explain that? Well, well, actually, I had that. Oh, so you're not going to answer the second question. I mean, I can address this one. So, I mean, I guess as Muslims, we believe that um, we believe that Allah said that it was made appeared. It appeared That's so. Not gonna help you know that, right? That's not going to help you because you're telling me what a Muslim is telling me. The Quran says what you think the Quran says. That's not but the meaning. You're asking me as me being a no, Muslim. No, no, I'm not asking you to answer as a Muslim. I'm saying as someone who's confronted with these facts. How do you deal with these facts well, that his followers said he was killed and raised? But that means your Quran is a lie because the yeah. Quran says his followers are Muslims. But we're talking about history, right? So yes. we're talking about something that someone wrote. So the problem Just with like that you're talking is, about the Quran that someone yeah, wrote. Yeah, exactly, exactly, history. exactly, right? So we're we're sort of in the same boat here because if we no, were, we're talking, not, buddy, everything in the past is based on something that someone wrote. No, no, I get that, and that's my point. My point is that we are talking about things that people wrote in the past, and we have to. The thing is, we have to look at it in a sense that look, we weren't there to see anything happen. None of us was right. At the end of the day, like, you know, I'm 33 years old, you, you know, you're probably a little bit older. God logic, I think you're slightly younger. I mean, we're nowhere near. We were, we weren't born at that time. We're trying to seek the truth, right? And whatever no, the truth is. Because notice how you dodge the bullet. I said on historical grounds, if you're going to use historical method, these are facts of history. How did you tap dance like a Muslim? Well, we were not there. We're basing on what someone wrote, but you base your entire faith on what someone wrote that you believe wrote in the seventh century. Yeah, so you're right. not seeking well, truth. You're seeking yourself. No, no, I agree with that. No, I, I completely agree with you. Can you adjust these facts? Well, the thing is, I can't address those facts because you could say something. You could say that, oh, people at that time believe that. Uh, Jesus was crucified, whereas I might be able to find evidence that Jesus wasn't crucified. Okay, give me the evidence. 
I can go and find evidence to. No, you can't. That. Not in the first century. You can't. That's a lie. There is no first century sources, even admitted by skeptical scholars. So you didn't hear anything I said. It is a lie what you're telling me, and you may be saying it in ignorance. There isn't any first century sources that say Christ was not killed by crucifixion. Either you're saying it in ignorance or you're lying to me. The okay. sources you're going to appeal to are Gnostics, which is going to now cause you greater problems because these Gnostic sources start arising in the second, third, fourth centuries, but they denied the crucifixion for a different reason. Reason. They believe that Christ was divine and being Greek philosophers, they thought that matter was evil and a divine Christ never became flesh. Do you think that's true of the historical Jesus? He wasn't flesh. Even Bart Ehrman, who doesn't believe Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, Luke wrote Luke, John wrote John. He'll tell you whoever the writers were. These are first century sources. And our earliest source is Mark. And then Paul is earlier. And these are first century sources. I'm giving you what you can establish on textual, historical, archaeological grounds. If you were to find someone to me who said Jesus was crucified, you'd be quoting second, third, fourth century sources from Greeks who converted to Christianity, who believed that Christ was divine, meaning God, one of the gods. And as a divine being, he would never become flesh because they believed matter was evil so that Christ did not have a body that can be killed. So what are you talking about? Mm. You cannot so, find any source that says Christ was not killed. Okay, so I mean, I'm not like going against what you're saying. Obviously, I'm going to look in. I want to research into this. Are you saying that it's so? Is the New Testament so the first five four books? I think um, are they the only books that say that yes. Jesus was crucified, or is there anything outside of yeah, the Bible? Okay, number one, you're assuming that the New Testament collection of books was one volume. Do you know these are independent documents that circulated independently? So what you have in New Testament is a collection of books written by different people at different times. It's not one author that wrote these books. So number one, within the New Testament, you have independent sources. That's number one. Number two, we even have sources outside of the New Testament, such as Ignatius, who have seven letters that are preserved, who was a disciple of the apostles, who was trained by them on his way to being martyred in Rome, a Gentile who converted Christianity, who's now going to be fed to the lions, and he's begging the Christians at Rome, let me be eaten by the beast. I want to die as a sacrifice for Christ. And as an eyewitness to the disciples who taught him, he says Christ was killed. Christ has been raised. Christ is alive. Christ is God, and he's a son of God. And that's a source outside of the New Testament. You want me to give you Polycarp? You want me to give you Justin Martyr? How many you want me to give you? Tacitus? You do not have any first century witnesses that deny Christ was killed. So when you come and tell me, well, everything we take, we believe in is based on what someone wrote. Okay, so what are you arguing? We should be agnostic? Then why are you Muslim? No, oh, well, I, well the, so look, if I believe that the Quran's from God and it states that, yes, he was appeared to, you know, to be killed in front of people, and then, you're misinterpreting the verse, you know that, right? That's not what it says. That's what your interpretation by later tradition says. It did not say he wasn't killed. It says they neither crucified him nor they neither killed him nor crucified. It appeared unto them. It yeah. appeared unto the Jews. Do you understand the language of the Quran? What that yeah, means? But if you, okay, so if it appeared to the Jews, if it appeared to the people that were trying to crucify him, then of course, then people would say he was crucified. Even his own crucified. disciples, huh? So we're Muslims according to the Quran? Sorry? Even his own disciples who preached that he but was killed. Decide, but you don't have collections of what they Here we go back. See, that's why I say you're a liar and you're not seeking the truth. We do have writings from the contemporaries of the apostles. I just mentioned Ignatius, a disciple of the apostles. That's why I said you're a liar. You're not looking for truth. Stop lying, man. I just I told you, Ignatius, okay. a disciple of the apostles who was trained by Peter, Paul, and John. Who said Christ was killed and raised? Why are you lying to me? No, I'm not lying. I don't know anything about these sources. Can you I now apologize for saying we don't have sources from the apostles when we have writings from the apostles like Paul and their disciples like Ignatius? I just mentioned them. Okay. So let me ask you the question, which you dodged again. Let's see if you're going to play dodgeball again with me. According to chapter 3, verse 52 of the Quran and 5, 111, it says that Jesus' followers were Muslims. But those Muslims taught Jesus was killed. So who made it look to them that Jesus was killed? Who made it look to them that because Jesus was That's what was you're killed. quoting, 4157. You don't even know what you're quoting to me. Yeah. It okay. says it was made to appear to them, which it doesn't mean what you think, but I'm going with your interpretation. Let's go with your interpretation. It was made to appear as if Jesus was killed. But the ones who preach he was killed are the disciples. So who made that appear to them, who are Muslims, that Jesus was killed and raised? I'll need to check to see whether the disciples did preach that he was Here killed. 
Okay, good night, brother. God bless you. It was well, thank you for your time. We'll talk to you again. Take care. Okay.